Today, we are going to review the Steel Dive SD1970, which is the homage to our famous Seiko Original Turtle, aka Captain Willard. Let's do a quick unboxing. It comes in this very secured plastic case with plenty of foam cushioning, and the timepiece is nicely wrapped. Along with that is the warranty card, which we can use when we are willing to send it overseas for repairs. We purchased this timepiece from Steel Dive store on AliExpress for $87, which is right on our price range. We thought about going for one of those new turtles that Seiko has released recently, which will run about $400 plus. But with this Steel Dive, we can find out how a turtle wears for a fifth of Seiko's price. Aside from that, I personally always want a good Seiko Automatic since I was 8 years old. We will talk more about that later. This watch looks beautiful in blue, and it feels solid too. That's always a great start. Steel Dive really have the most convoluted design for a logo. Here is a clear shot of the logo on the back plate. Oh, the logo is actually a bunch of diving equipment, such as masks, oxygen tanks, and fins. No problem on the back plate. But once the logo shrinks down to this tiny on the watch face, it is just hard to recognize anything at all. Let's get some measurements. Diameter of the watch is 41.2 mm. Lug width is 18.6 mm at the lux, which tapers down to 16.6 mm at the clasp. It is 13.5 mm thick. Lug to lug is short by design at 46.5 mm which makes this watch easily sit on smaller wrists. Here is how it wears on my 5 and 3 quarter inches ultra skinny wrist, which means all watches will look big on my wrist. The turtle design is excellent in this way with a short luck to luck distance so that it will fit on a variety of wrists. And yet it has larger watch face for easy time traveling. One can easily argue that this design is what made the turtle so unique. The watch has a 120 clicks unidirectional ceramic bezel with solid action. Top of the watch has a brush finish. Turning to its side, it has a polished finish. It also sports a signed crown. The crown is a screw down crown with three levels of adjustment. Somehow my fingers cannot get a good grip to pull it out. With the aid of a plastic card, we managed to bypass this small issue. It is smooth sailing for the adjustment of minute and hour hand, no problem. The screw down crown action is also very satisfying. The bracelet is made out of 316L stainless steel with solid links. It deploys push pins. The double locking clasp spots the logo as well as the brand name. It is a pressed clasp. While some critics have replaced this with a milled clasp, I rather prefer this clasp with the brand name and logo on it. The clasp also has three slots for micro adjustment. It works very well. This watch carries 21,600 beats per hour, has 40 hours of power reserve, Bit error is good at 0.2 milliseconds. Amplitude is ok at 247, can be higher. Minus 5 seconds of delay per day is very good. Let's test the crystal out with our diamond selector. And it invokes a 2 bar response. So this is a sapphire crystal that should be scratch resistant. Let's try to scratch the crystal with a key. This really is the key for having sapphire as crystal. No pun intended. Pressure applied, and it is still shiny. No scratch, no problem. The looms are great. Two different colors of looms are used. Critics cited this inconsistency. I think it is okay. After 15 minutes, the looms still appears strong. As it approaches 30 minutes, the looms faded out considerably, but it is still legible. 
the blue looms on the bezel and the hands outlasts the green looms on the indices. Oh, you know, one cannot ask for more than this package at $87. This is a Seiko homage with a Seiko movement. Closest of any homage can be to the real thing. I highly recommend this watch. I always wanted a Seiko since I was 8 years old. At that age, I was a primary school student in Hong Kong. I remember sitting in classes, wanting them to end so I can go home. In our class of 41 students, only one student, Philip Young, had a watch. Based on his timekeeping, we would yell countdowns for the bell to ring so that our classes will end. Those countdowns were extremely accurate. One day, I finally went over to Philip and checked out his watch. It was a mid-sized Seiko that his father bought. I came to admire Seiko so much to the point that during my childhood weekends, I would stand outside jewelry store that had Philip's timepiece on display with its full line of options that came in the color of blue or black. Philip's version was in black, but I always wanted the blue version. After many years wanting a blue Seiko, and in the form of this turtle, I finally got my wish. We collect timepieces for different reasons. Aside from the timekeeping aspect, we will have anecdotes behind how we choose or acquire timepieces. As for me, this one is a reminder at a particular time in my childhood and a long forgotten wish. Never too late to realize your dreams, and that is life. Thanks for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. See you all in our next video. Thank you.